Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at two Beta FPV boards, kind of a quick peek. These are both Express LRS boards, so that means you need to have an Express LRS module, uh, unless you have that new Beta FPV uh, light radio. It's uh, I don't have one, but it's small, it's white, it has Express LRS built into the radio. Otherwise, you do need a module, such as the, the Beta FPV, or maybe the Happy model for your Jumper T-Lite, or the Namimmo uh, for your much larger, say, TX16S or other radios that fit a standard size module bay. So you'll need a module or you'll need that uh, new light radio in order to bind to these because they do use Express LRS in both cases. Uh, in the case of this one, it is a 5 amp ESC and you can see that little cube antenna. I think it, it really doesn't translate how small that antenna is. Um, even when you look at some of the small Express LRS receivers, many people I've uh, commented about how small they are in real life, but uh, we could take a little look at the pads here and everything. Uh, as you can probably tell, there's no other antenna on this, so there's no VTX built into these. You will need to add in your own VTX for both of these boards, and these are also just 1S. Uh, flip side look at this you can tell this is going to be the lighter version and we'll weigh them both up here in a minute this would be more appropriate for your traditional 75 or 65 millimeter whoops uh, you could probably use it for other purposes for non-prop protected quads as well uh, but this one's probably going to be a bit lighter if we look at this version it is the 12 amp version and it comes with a longer antenna so you'd be able to get this out of way uh, the premise there is you could, you know, get better range, better antenna placement, uh, that last degree. But when it comes to micros, you know, unless you're wanting to send your micro to the moon, um, even this little cube antenna that's plastic on these would be uh, pretty sufficient. Uh, but the, what's unique about this outside of the just the obvious layout, uh, having the, a larger board, probably most appropriate for things like a, an 85 millimeter whoop or a toothpick style ultralight sort of build. Again, 1S 12 amp ESC is this connector right over here. And you can see this just kind of off screen. This is our USB adapter. We plug this in to this connector. And that is how uh, we manipulate the board. It does not have a USB port on it. And what do you think about that? So if you lose or damage this, uh, hopefully we can get another one somewhere. I'm not certain why they would do that. I, my suspicion is the weight. They probably say on their webpage some reason why they use this. But uh, maybe instead of using uh, USB-C, we just need to go back to micro USB that has worked for a very long time. Uh, it's a very uh, convenient and light connector. I would say the convenience factor on this is uh, diminished a little bit. Of course, they both come with the BT20 connector, uh, Beta FPV's connector that they're using for 1S batteries now. Uh, let's take a closer look at the bottom side here. You can see the print, the silk screen on there. Uh, of course, this side, you probably wouldn't solder the pads to. It does come with the connectors that you can see over here in the bag, as well as the gummies and a little bit of mounting. So you can solder the connectors on if that would be your preference. Otherwise, you would be using these pads just off the edge over here, these three pads on each corner. That would be where you'd connect your motor wires. But let's weigh them up. Starting with the 5 amp board, it's a... Uh... About four grams. The 12 amp board is coming real close to uh, six grams. And if we add in the gummies, we get just a touch over six grams. And for a comparison, as far as weight goes, this is not an Express LRS receiver in this board, but this one does have a VTX. This is the Diamond uh, Happy Model board. It comes in at four and three quarter grams. And another comparison, this is the Happy Model Express LRS board. This one uh, does have the VTX on it and it comes in at six grams right on the nose. It probably is worth noting that this board is supposed to have a V2 out uh, sometime soon that is going to be a 2S version. I don't see where they have plans to include the VTX in that uh, for a true all-in-one. The price of this board, the V1 board, uh, looks to be about $45, whereas the price of this one is coming in at uh, $39.99. So price is real close. Of course, you know, again, depending upon what you're building, uh, you might want one over the other. Of course, I've said many times to several people is I'm going all in with Express LRS. I, especially on whoops and flying inside, I really feel the, well, I shouldn't make it so dramatic. I feel a difference between the 500 um, megahertz packet rate versus 
stock packet rate using FR Sky. I am not an avid user of Red Pine. I tried it a year or two ago. I just thought it was more trouble than it was worth to uh, set up. So I haven't really uh, run the Red Pine protocol. Um, but Express LRS, I am buying all sorts of different kinds of receivers, the really tiny uh, cube style, and adding it to my personal builds. I may still use other receiver protocol um, if a quad comes to the channel that has the receiver already built in, or if it's real easy for me to just plug in one of the uh, pre-wired FR Sky RXSR receivers. But otherwise, when it comes to stuff that I'm building or adding my own receiver, pretty much going to be using Express LRS from here on out. So just a quick look at these two little boards here. Uh, maybe a few people out there might not be aware that they are available if you have uh, winter builds coming up for a whoop or you're interested in a long range toothpick style quad that's maybe running 1S. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.